Okay, so welcome back to the final session. So, you know, I guess you're all looking forward to uh, Marco's talk. Thank you. Okay, so uh, as you see, this is the joint work with uh, with Michele, who left this morning, with uh, Amita Basu and Dr. Zambelli. And uh, so we, what, what we tried to do was to give uh, a purely theoretical uh, justification of the apparent supremacy of only mixed integer cuts in uh, practice. Uh, so Gomory mixed integer cuts are those cuts that can very easily derive from the tableau, from the linear relaxation, so the tableau of linear relaxation just with a very simple formula, and that are uh, implemented in all solvers and seem to perform extremely well. So uh, we, we, we ask ourselves uh, if there is some theoretical justification for this. So what we need in the, the first uh, step is to, to decide how to compare cuts. So first thing you should, you should do uh, is uh, to choose a reasonable criterion that you use to evaluate cuts and compare cuts one with the other in order to say that one cut is better than another. And uh, this is already a non-trivial step. And then after you fix such a criterion, the problem is how to find the best cut from a theoretical point of view according to that criterion. So uh, we are not the first to, to investigate uh, such a question. So let me just give a, a, a one example just to illustrate some issues that uh, can arise. So in 2010, Cadu uh, decided to evaluate cuts according to the Euclidean distance of the hyperplane, uh, sorry, hyperplane defining the cut from the uh, continuous relaxation that you want to cut off, so the deepest cut. And uh, so the order itself says that uh, in the end this, uh, this criterion is not satisfactory, so I'm not claiming this, it's the order that uh, claims this in the paper. So because, uh, well, first, uh, there's no solution in closed form. So once you have your linear relaxation, your current solution, you can find an algorithm proposed by Kadu, uh, the deepest cut, but it's not that I can tell you uh, in advance without knowing the instance what is the closed the close formula to, 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 to derive this cut. Uh, second, uh, uh, except for very lucky exception, you will not get the facet of the integer hull. I mean, this is not uh, really satisfactory with this criterion. And finally, he, he made some experiments and he said, uh, okay, actually this criterion doesn't work well uh, in practice. So it doesn't add anything to, to the standard cuts that you find uh, usually. So we propose a completely different criterion. Uh, I mean, completely different, a different criterion. Uh, what, what we measure is uh, how much we cut off from the linear relaxation. So it's not clear that this is the correct choice, but this is our choice. So uh, a cut is um, designed to cut off a part of the linear relaxation, so we measure the volume of the portion of linear relaxation, assuming that the thing is bounded and three-dimensional, the portion that we cut off. Uh, so uh, we will see that, uh, well, we will not see everything, but I can tell you that uh, the, the three issues that I highlighted before have a positive answer in this case. Well, first of all, uh, in the context of current polyhedra that I will introduce in one minute, uh, the, the, the optimal cut is always facet defining according to this criterion, so maybe this is a, a good thing. Second, there is a closed form solution, and this is the Gomery mixed integer cut, you, you, which you can predict and give in advance. There is an asterisk here, this is very important, I will tell you what is this in, uh, in one minute. And finally, uh, I will not care about uh, computation, but uh, it's very well known that these cuts, these uh, Gomory mixed cuts, are very effective in practice. So, so maybe this uh, gives a justification of why these cuts are so good. So the asterisk, the asterisk is the following. So it's not true that uh, if you give me any instance, then Gomory mixed integer cuts, uh, cuts cut off the, the largest volume. This is not true for any instance. This is true on average. So. Uh, and uh, along the same line, it's, it's not true that uh, uh, for every instance, Gomory cuts perform well. This is true on average. So we can prove this in the context of the gomory johnson relaxation that I will recall very briefly. Uh, these relaxations are essentially a model to, uh, to describe at the same time all possible integer programming problems. So having uh, a cut that maximizes the volume cut off uh, in this context mean, means in, indeed that in, on average uh, these cuts have tend to perform very well, tend to cut off the maximum volume. But I will be more precise uh, uh, later. Uh, so one positive interpretation is that maybe Gomery cuts are good because uh, they are the optimal solution to this optimization problem. So the, cut that, the cuts that remove the largest uh, volume from the continuous relaxation. Maybe a negative interpretation is that actually these Gomery Johnson relaxation were introduced to generalize mixed integer, sorry, Gomery mixed integer cuts in the hope of finding something uh, 
uh, some other cuts that are useful in practice. So maybe a negative interpretation is that actually the theory of Gowan and Johnson cannot give anything better than what was the origin of this theory, so the covering is integer cuts. Okay, so let me mm, tell you only the few things that we, you need to know about the Gomery Johnson relaxation. So when you solve a, a given IP problem, you get uh, some uh, tableau. So here, y1 and y2 are the basic variables. And you write the basic <laughs> variables as a, some combination of the, of the non-basic variables. Uh, the xi's are the non-basic variables. Each one is multiplied by some column of your tableau. And then you have a right-hand side, which is assumed to be not an integer vector, otherwise you have finding the optimal integer solution. Okay? And, the vari and all the variables have to be non-negative and integer. So this is just a tableau. Now, a very famous relaxation, relaxation is the corner polyhedron. The corner polyhedron is obtained by just forgetting that the y variables, sorry, that the y variables should be non-negative. You only remember that they have to be integer. So if you Imagine that this vector is an integer vector, then uh, what we are saying is that uh, this combination should be equal to the right hand side uh, modulo of some integer vector. Because we have lo lost information about the non negativity of the y's. So this is called the corner polyhedron. And uh, uh, Gomery Johnson infinite relaxation is uh, the extension of this uh, uh, model uh, in this sense. So here you have. Uh, a bunch of columns, each of them is multiplied by a non-negative integer variables. If you want to study a general IT problem, you cannot, you cannot know, in, know in advance what are these columns, so let's just put all the possible columns in R2. So let's extend this summation to an infinite summation where you take all possible columns in R2 or Rn if you have, if you have n rows in your tableau. So you take the summation of all possible columns, and each column, as in this uh, equation, is multiplied by some variable, but now the variable actually is not a vector with finitely many entries, it's a vector with infinitely many entries, one for each column. So I will call the integer variable multiplied by column R, I will call it x of R. Or if, if you prefer it, it, it might be called x sub R. So it's just, a, so it's just a, an equation like this, so where we have infinitely many columns, each multiplied by some variable, now this x can be thought as a function because a vector with infinitely many entries is just a function, if you want it. And this function takes a value for every column and it returns an integer or negative integer because the variables are not negative integer. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, do you only consider two rows as an example? Yeah, yeah, it's just an example. So here there are n rows, if you want it, so this is a so let's just think of this as an uh, infinite summation. Now, this summation, to make sense, you need to, you need to have uh, only finitely many terms. So I require that uh, this function has finite support, which means that uh, it takes value zero only, sorry, it takes uh, no zero value only of a, on a finite uh, number of elements of this domain, which means that x is a vector indeed, okay? So once you fix the support of this, uh, so the finite subset of Rn where x really takes some zero values, you are fixing the columns of your tableau. So once you fix the support, you can, re re you can find every possible corner polyhedron, sorry. So if you want these three columns, you decide that the support of x is given by these three columns of Rn over two, and now your x is just uh, the solution to this system. Okay, I will not uh, go into this uh, more than this because we don't need them. Uh, just uh, uh, the point is that this can be seen as uh, describing all possible corner polyhedra at the same time. And then there is a discretized version of this infinite relaxation, which is called finite relaxation, where essentially you, you imagine that uh, you are only interested in those columns that, have, that, are discrete, that are integer multiples of 1 over k. For instance, in this example, all the columns are multiple of 0 0.1, 1 over 10. So you might take k equal to 10 and only study those uh, uh, tableau, those corner polyhedron in which the columns are multiple 1 over 10. This is the discrete version of the so-called finite corner Johnson relaxation. I will uh, play with both uh, these relaxations. Um, now, so this, uh, in this model, uh, the unknowns are three integer variables. In this model, the unknowns, are, the unknowns are functions. The function, I mean, the, the solution to the system is some function with this property. Okay, so the, instead of vectors, we have functions. Now, let me, I, I will now denote by G, G stands for group, but it doesn't matter, 
either Rn or 1 over Kzn, either the set of all possible columns or discretized columns, because what I'm going to say it works for both cases. And if you think of the cutting plane approach now, so in the current polyhedron, what you want to cut off is the current uh, continuous, sorry, the current uh, solution to the continuous relaxation. What is the solution to the continuous relaxation here? Well, we only have the non-basic variable here. So the solution is just the zero, the zero vector. Oops. Okay, these are non-basic variables. So the continuous relaxation has x1, x2, and x3 equal to zero. For the same reason here, the solution that corresponds to the continuous, uh, the optimal of the continuous relaxation is the all zero function x. So what you want to cut off from this model is the all zero function, which does not satisfy this equation because b is not an integer vector. So you can really cut it off. And now, uh, how, so you want to separate zero from this set. How do you separate zero? Well, by writing a linear inequality in this infinite dimensional set. So in finite dimension, writing a linear inequality in a linear inequality means that you want to assign a coefficient to every variable. We do the same here, but now the number of variables is infinite. So instead of assigning, describing the coefficient by a vector, we will describe the coefficient of the valid inequality by a function pi. And this is your linear inequality. You multiply each variable for its coefficient, coefficient like in linear inequalities, in finite dimension. And the greater than or equal to 1 is because you know that uh, the origin, the zero function, has to be cut off. So you can write the inequality in this form without loss of generality. So valid inequalities are called valid functions in this setting. And these valid functions, uh, right, the mixed governing mixed integer <coughs> cast, are really a fun can be described by a function of this type. Like it's just a, a rule that tells you if you have this column in your tableau, then the variable should, should get this coefficient in the cut. If you think of when you derive a common cutting plane, you just look at the coefficient of every variable without looking at the other variable. So it's really a function that applies to the coefficient of every variable and returns the coefficient that you should write in the cut. Okay, now uh, the, the among all the valid function, uh, it's uh, so now there's a, a bit of hierarchy. So uh, there are the minimal valid functions that are enough for the purpose of, of generating good cutting planes. Minimal means that you cannot make any coefficient smaller than what it is without changing the others. So you cannot increase the vector coefficients. And uh, also, uh, there is also a subset of minimal valid function called uh, extreme functions. These are also enough for the purpose of cutting planes. Uh, an extreme function is one that's not the complex combination of other valid functions. So, uh, if you have uh, two valid functions, uh, the convex combination is implied by them, so extreme functions are enough for, for the purpose. Now, extreme functions are not well characterized, but minimal functions are well characterized. I don't really need the, the full characterization, but just, just two important things. So, a minimal function, so something that you can write here and get a minimal uh, valid inequality, if you have a valid inequality, always has, uh, takes value zero on the integer, the integer columns of the tableau. It is a bad I will not really use this, although it's crucial in our paper, but satisfy this subjectivity. I don't care about symmetry now, but what is really important is that every, every minimal function is periodic with respect to the integer lattice, which means that if you add an integer vector to the argument, you don't change the value of pi. I will use this, the only thing that I will really use now. Okay? So if you add an integer vector, you don't change your, your function, the value of your function. Okay, now I'm ready to tell you the volume criterion in, uh, more, more formally. So let's start, this is the case that we look in detail, that we look at in detail, and we will see in two minutes the generalization. Uh, let's fix the discrete case, and you see there is no n, the n, the n uh, superscript here. So this is really a single row in your tableau, and this row, this row is a multiple one over k. This is the set that, so n is equal to one, and I take the discrete version of the model. Now, we know that uh, every minimal valid function, so every valid inequality is, is periodic modulo one now, because they are in dimension one. So we, we just look at what happens in the fundamental interval zero one. So in the fundamental interval zero one, you have uh, k variables. So here k is prime, I will tell you later why. Uh, these are the variables in uh, the interval zero one. Okay, the first k from x0, x1 over k through x1 uh, minus 1 over k. 
so now we are in a in a space in which there is one variable for every for every element of one over k times z, but I restrict to the interval zero one where I only have k variables. And now I want to look at what this inequality, which is just a, a half space hyperplane, does in this space of variables. So let's, for instance, assume that k is equal to three, as in this example. So you have a three-dimensional uh, setting in which you have variable x0, variable x1 third, and variable x2 third. It's a three-dimensional non-negative open. And what I want to do, well, first there is one property which follows from the fact that pi is subadditive and k is prime. I will not prove this, but we know that pi of the integer is zero, and then you can show that uh, all other, on all other points, pi take, takes a strictly positive value. Now, what does this mean? Well, if you look at this inequality, Saying that the coefficient of variable x0 is 0 means that your half, half space, your hyperplane, is parallel to this direction. Okay? Because the coefficient of this variable is 0. These are finite dimensional arguments. Okay? And uh, saying that these values are positive means that there is an intersection with this axis. So if you want to know where this uh, the corresponding hyperplane here when you have equality intersects the axis x one third, you have to set to zero all variables except for x one third and you look at the, the intersection point. Okay, this intersection point, uh, if you look at this formula, will be one divided by pi one third, right? Okay. And similarly the intersection point here will be one divided by pi two third some precise numbers. So now, if you look at what uh, we are cutting off from the non-negative orthant, so uh, when you have a corner polyhedron, the, the most natural continuous relaxation is just the non-negative orthant. Okay, so I really want to know what I cut off from the non-negative orthant. Then uh, actually you cut off this triangle, actually a prism which uh, is constructed upon this triangle, right? But uh, since all, all value, all minimum inequalities are unbounded in this direction, I mean cutoff are parallel to this direction, let's just for the moment ignore this direction and we go to measure, we measure the volume which we, which we cut off here on the projection, on the finite bounded projection, bounded projection. Now, uh, so as I said, the inequality is parallel to the axis at zero, it just, okay, it's already set. Now the volume cutoff is just the volume of the simplest. And so the volume of a k minus one dimensional simplex, because I forgot about mm -hmm. one uh, component, is just given by this formula. So what we want to do is to find among all possible pi, which are minimal value inequalities, the one that maximizes this volume here. Of course, you might object that I am uh, making an infinite volume uh, finite uh, with this trick, that I'm forgetting about all the other intervals in which this picture fits. Uh, but uh, we will see that this makes sense in the continuous version where we don't have one over k here. Okay. For the moment, let's just look at this uh, problem here. Now, the solution to this problem is the following. Let's assume for one minute that p is, uh, so p is the right-hand side of your model, is the last number in your interval 0, 1. This retires interval 0, 1. For this special case, the Gomory mixed integer function, which has this plot, if you really look at the Gomory, formula and you plot the function when b has this value, you get uh, this thing here. So this is the uh, unique maximizer of the volume cutoff. So in this example, k is equal to 5, so you have the number from 0 to 4 over 5, and the red number is just b, the last number in the interval 0, 1. So this is the, uh, we will see that the Gomory mixture function is the function cutting off the largest volume, and uh, what happens if b is any other number, for instance, 2 over 5, then you just have to play with the group uh, automorphisms. So you see this as uh, the group with five, uh, the cyclic group with five elements. And now to go from this number to this number, we have to multiply by 3, because uh, 3 times this is 12 over 5, which modulo 1 is 2 over 5. Remember that everything is periodic modulo 1. So. So in this case, the function that you get is you take 1 over 5 and you multiply by 3, so you get to 3 over 5, so I put this point over 3 over 5. 2 over 5 becomes 6 over 5, which is 1 over 5, so this point goes here. 
and you apply this automorphism. So this is the unique maximizer of the volume cutoff when B is equal to 2 over 5. In other words, uh, if B is not this special number, then the unique optimal solution is not uh, the Gomory function, as one might may expect, but it's an automorphism of another Gomory function, which is a little bit surprising because the Gomory function for this example is this one. So this is not the maximizer. This is the maximizer. But, OK. Now, I will just uh, uh, tell you two main ingredients for the proof. Now, you see that the proof will be very easy to follow. Uh, so let's fix B to be the last number in the interval 0, 1, because then we can just apply automorphisms. Now, we can prove that if you take a minimal valid function like this one, this can be shown to be minimal and valid because it's super additive and satisfies all the properties. And if you just rearrange the, 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 the values of the function in increasing order, so these are exactly the same points at the same height, but reordered in non-decreasing order, then what you get is still a minimal function for this model, still a minimal valid function, still super additive and it has all the properties. And you can prove this with some inequalities from the theory groups. Okay, it's not needed, but you can show this. So this will be the first ingredient, the non-trivial ingredient. The second one, which is a little bit easier, is that uh, if you have uh, now an extreme function, extreme is a stronger property, and it is non-decreasing, then it has to be the Gomery function. There are no other functions which are non-decreasing and extreme except for this one, the Gomery function, when B is this uh, specific number. Now, if you keep in mind, if you keep in mind these two results, the proof becomes uh, extremely easy, just a convexity <coughs> proof. So this is our volume, the volume of the simplex, uh, which is equivalent to minimize. So I remove this term here, which is a constant when k is fixed. And then I minimize because I take the inverse of this uh, number here. Now, if you take any pi, which is a minimizer of your uh, function here, <coughs> then we can rearrange it uh, in non-decreasing order. And as we said, uh, as I said, uh, you get uh, some pi prime, which is again uh, a minimal function. And why is it still a minimizer? Because when you re rearrange the values, you don't change this product here. You are just changing the order of the value which pi takes, but the product of the values doesn't change. So if pi is a minimizer, the rearranged function is still a minimizer. Okay, when you write the values in increasing order. Now, this function here is a log concave, a strict log concave. So if you take the log of this function, you get the sum of the logarithms. So it's a a strictly concave function. And whenever you take the optimal solution of a strictly log concave function, this optimal <coughs> solution has to be an extreme solution, an extreme point of your set. But in this context, extreme point means extreme function. It's really the same. So, in, a, in one word, pi prime is extreme because of this property. It's non decreasing because it's the rearranged function. And there is only one function which is extreme and non decreasing. It's the boundary function. And that's it which means that the Gomory function is a minimizer. So it's a maximizer of the volume at all. <coughs> then you can play a little bit with the subadditivity and prove that actually it is the unique maximizer, but I will not do this. Wait, is at least this slide clear, given the others? Now, what I want to do in the last five minutes is to try to tell you what we do in this uh, more general setting. So remember, now pi is a function which, which goes from Rn to R plus, which means that you take uh, any number of columns in your tableau, and you do not assume that the entries, that the entries are discrete multiples of 1 over k. They are just uh, continuous. Now, the problem is the following. It is still, still true that uh, the function is periodic, so you, you can restrict to the fundamental hypercube, 0, 1 to the n, because then everything repeats by periodicity. But now, how many... It's not true that you only have three axes. Now you have uh, as many coordinates as uh, the number of r in this set. So you have an uncountable uh, infinite number of uh, axes in your non-negative order. Okay. So how can you measure the volume here? It is still true that uh, you have some inequalities which, in a sense, uh, intersect every axis, uh, almost every axis, so cuts off, cuts off a sort of simplex, infinite dimensional simplex uh, from the negative order. But you cannot talk about the volume uh, of the simplex because you should multiply this, this edge length, uh, this side length, uh, infinitely many times. So, so. Now, what we do is the following we, we say that uh, we 
argue as follows. So when you have a simplex, uh, finite dimensional simplex, uh, the volume is essentially the product of the side length. Well, uh, or rectangular, the same. And uh, uh, maximizing the volume means maximizing the geometric mean uh, of the side length. Okay, it's the same. Geometric mean is just a product under some uh, root. So what we do is that for every axis, we, we take the length of this uh, intersection, of this uh, side length, and, and the value that you get is still 1 over pi of uh, the name of the coordinates. So you know that the length of the axis, 1 over pi of r, the length, sorry, of the portion of the axis that you intersect, and we take the geometric mean of these infinite number of numbers. How do you take the geometric mean in infinite, uh, when you have infinitely many values? Well, it's always true that if you take the arithmetic mean of the logarithms, you get uh, the log of the geometric mean. So instead of taking the geometric mean, we take uh, the arithmetic mean of the logarithm. And what we get is the logarithm of the geometric mean. And now it's easy to take the log, the arithmetic mean, even if you have an infinite number of values. You just take the integral of these values, and you divide by the volume of this set here, which is 1. So what we want to maximize, actually, is this number here, over all possible function pi's that are minimal. And uh, you can prove that this integral exists. It's not trivial to prove that. It, or, or, you know that sometimes pi over is equal to 0. Actually, infinitely many times, I'm sorry. But still, uh, well, not infinitely, sometimes. But still, uh, this integral can be shown to exist, uh, always. Uh, and uh, we can actually prove that uh, the maximum value of this integral is uh, 1, which means that, uh, in the optimal case, uh, you cut off a simple, sort of simplex in which the average side length is e, the, the order number. And this is achieved when you have the Gomorrah mixed integer cut, the Gomorrah mixed integer function. So I will not show this, but uh, the approach, so this is the result. Uh, but let, let's just ignore the result. But actually, I'm saying that uh, you optimize that function now when you get, uh, when, you, when you choose the Gomori mixed integer cut. And note that this time I'm not forgetting about any axis. I'm really taking the intersection with all possible axes. Now, the, the, I will not prove it. Uh, I will just, just want to tell you that uh, First operation that we need is again to rearrange the value function, the function value, sorry, in increasing order. But now you have infinitely many values, so it's not clear how you order them increasingly. But we can do that by using some uh, uh, results from theory of measure. Then we approximate our non-decreasing function with a sequence of uh, discrete functions, as the ones that I discussed before. And then you apply some limit argument, uh, and you show that actually uh, our new function is the limit of the previous function, and uh, everything works out. So I will not go into detail here. Okay, this, will, this is uh, the end of my talk. I hope uh, it was clear. I know that uh, for probably almost all of you it was something not really uh, in your field. I hope it was uh, more or less clear.